um, normally I'm uh, I'm also riding a desk, so I'm the uh, chief pilot in the forward operating base in Cologne. But today I'm uh, I'm the lucky guy being the aircraft commander for the today's mission. Yeah, the mission of today was uh, in participation of the cold response uh, exercise, which is a big every two year uh, happening at NATO exercise. And uh, we as MMU participated the first time uh, this year. And today we had uh, a mission to support Norwegian F-35s. We delivered the refuel they requested. And uh, beside that, uh, there was also providing fuel for additional receivers if needed, but unfortunately, nobody else showed up. So uh, yeah, normally it's just a regular domestic flight route like an airliner. So we just entered domestic airspace. In this case, it was just northbound. We left uh, Germany to the north via Denmark. Uh, then we crossed uh, and entered uh, the uh, Norwegian area right away. Then that's all the way up to the north, more or less uh, where we uh, orbited over at Bordeaux. Um, where the, all the area, also the training exercise area was located. And now we're on more or less on the way back, the same way. Um, yeah, from the tasking side, it is more or less somebody makes his, um, his mind about uh, which tanker is assigned to which receiver. So there's an air tasking order, that's the so-called more or less the message to all participants with their tasking. So we will find out eventually that uh, in this air tasking order, we will be scheduled with the F-35. So when we are airborne and we are on station, there is a timing, it's timing based. They will show up normally on our left side, joining from below. And once we clear them in our vicinity of the aircraft, they will join on the left hand side. So, so they wait on the left, refuel in the center and pay on the right. And then they leave uh, high again. Right now for co-response, the, uh, the amount of receivers is not that high. So we bring way more fuel than we deliver for the time being. But this is uh, also due to the fact that uh, fuel has to be available. So uh, in respect of the receiver numbers, you cannot judge that. It depends on the mission. So uh, normally um, we just uh, are tasked to bring fuel into the area. Uh, of course, as much as needed, but normally we also have spare fuel available if needed for, for whatever co coincidence. On the technical side, we are also awaiting the clearance for the Swedish Gripen. And soon there is uh, the technical compatibility. And uh, we, when that is done, we also get the, the clearance for them. And then maybe in two years, uh, we will also have the Gripen as receivers. Uh, I think if you look at the, at the history, it's always just partners. So they're also participating in, uh, in big exercises. And it doesn't matter if it's a NATO exercise or other exercises. They're just participating in uh, Western Hemisphere exercises. And uh, they uh, are used to be uh, coalition partners uh, when it goes for the refueling. Yeah, since we are still uh, growing and uh, still getting into the business as a multinational unit, we're getting more and more together with uh, all the participating nations. Uh, we're getting more and more clearances. So also the, the, the brand Multi, which is our call sign, is now get more and more known to, to the receiver world. And uh, we already made good contacts now with the Americans recently, uh, and it will be more. So like the Swedish guys, uh, the Czechs are to come, the, the French uh, are very interested in uh, joining on our tank as well. Uh, later on this year, there will be a big exercise in Australia where we are supposed to go uh, to build up uh, a relationship with the Australians as well. So it's a big community. Also with this kind of aircraft, uh, there are all over the world multiple nations who are using that same aircraft. And it's also in our interest to build up a relationship to these nations, to learn from each other, to harmonize and standardize the procedures. Yes, uh, I'm the aero on board of this uh, flight today. Uh, my function on board is uh, to provide uh, receivers with the fuel. We have uh, actually uh, two ways to uh, provide uh, aircrafts uh, with fuel in the air. We have uh, first of all the boom, which is behind the, the tail. Uh, this is uh, how I uh, will fly the boom and make contacts to the receivers. A second way to make uh, contacts or uh, deliver fuel is uh, by the hose and rope uh, system. And those systems are uh, below the wings.
I have to uh, maintain uh, the clearances. I, I'm still uh, responsible for uh, all the uh, movement behind the airplane. So the clearance of the airplanes and also the communications. Uh, so my uh, uh, console is uh, in the forward part of the aircraft, in, in the flight deck, uh, facing the rear. Um, I have uh, multiple uh, camera systems uh, in which I have uh, full vision of the rear of the aircraft. Uh, when we have uh, boom contacts, uh, it's in a 3D, so I wear 3D glasses to have a better uh, 3D perception of uh, the contacts. Uh, normal procedures are, uh, uh, they are released by the defense controller. They will send them to our uh, left wing, echelon left, uh, at which point I will take over and then I will guide them to the eastern position or the pre-contact position. Once they are stable, I call them in to make contact. So they are, when the, once they are stable in the contact position, I'll make the contact with the boom. Uh, we start the offload. When the offload is finished, I will disconnect, send the receiver back to uh, a stern position, uh, give him the offload and uh, clear him to the right wing or the right uh, observer position.